Hello and welcome to the webinar. On behalf of Digistore, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedules to be with us. My name is Andrew Mooney and I'm the Managing Director of Digistore. We are excited to be able to bring you this webinar today, but before we get underway, I'll cover off a couple of items of housekeeping so we can get the most out of the webinar. First up, Q&A. Throughout the webinar, we encourage you to submit written questions via the Q&A button as they occur to you. Click the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom window on your screen and type your question. Please use the Q&A button, not the chat button. Um, although we may not answer or may not be able to answer all questions during the live webinar, we will ensure we get back to you with responses after the webinar. Uh, recording, if everything goes as planned, the webinar will be recorded and a link to view on demand will be sent to everyone once we've prepared and uploaded the video. So first off, let me introduce Digistore. Last year, 2020, marked Digistore's 30th year in business. Like for all of us, late 2020 and 2021 brought Digistore some unique challenges and surprises, which have resulted in new ways of working and living and new technologies to address these. These new developments were in some cases new ideas and in some cases a dramatic acceleration in take up and improvement of existing technologies. Production and post-production teams have been flung into remote working models and audiences have had to be reached in new ways and via new channels. It's been an exciting time for Digistore as we have navigated these developments to provide new solution offerings for our customers and welcome new customers operating in ways that had not been previously possible. This webinar explores some of those solutions offerings. Digistore addresses a wide range of application areas across many industries. I've summarized on this slide some of the areas we address around remote and live production, which would be relevant to the audience attending today, but it's really just the tip of the iceberg. I'd encourage you to get in touch with us to discuss any technology or technical service requirements you have, whether it's how do I deliver high quality live video to my remote team, or what's the best way to share media assets in real time to my team members, or anything else, we're here to help. Digistore works with a wide range of leading vendors. Our close working relationship with vendor partners means we can utilize their staff and resources to work with us on solutions for your needs. Here are just a few relevant vendors that we work with. Of course, we can't answer all of the questions or address all the specific workflows and requirements for everyone in this session. So I'd encourage you to contact your Digistore account manager or Digistore generally so that we can help you further. Here are our main contact details and communication channels but feel free to reply to the emails for this webinar at any time. Look out for our webinar follow-up email with further information and a link to the recording. Okay, the agenda today. First off, we're gonna discuss some of the challenges involved with encoding and streaming live quality HD or even UHD signals. Uh, we're gonna give an overview of the Elemental Link devices and the AWS Elemental sorry, AWS Media Live Services. Then we're going to set, step into a live demonstration showing the complete workflow to set up a live streaming channel complete with graphic overlays. We'll then look at some example workflows. And finally, we'll look at how to leverage 4G or 5G bonded cellular technology to enable the same high quality streaming from locations where no fixed internet is available. We have a lot to go through, so let's get the show on the road. I'd like to introduce Digistore's guest presenters today, Mike Ellis and Ivan Geraghty from AWS Elemental. It is our privilege to be working with Mike and Ivan when delivering Digistore solutions to our customers that are integrated with AWS Elemental offerings. Mike is a media specialist responsible for the AWS Elemental Media Services suite of cloud video services and the AWS Elemental Live and AWS Elemental Link families of video encoding devices. 
Since joining AWS Elemental in January 2017, Mike has worked with a wide variety of organizations in Australia and New Zealand to assist in delivering mission critical live streaming, video on demand services, and live events, including the Summer and Winter Olympics, the Gold Coast 2018 Commonwealth Games, and the Australian Open, just to name a few. Michael, um, Ivan will be conducting much of the demonstration today. Uh, Ivan is a solutions architect manager specializing in AWS media services. He has spent more than 20 years working in the broadcast industry on a wide variety of video processing solutions and assisted numerous customers in ANZ with the deployment of complex cloud and on-prem hybrid workflows. So without further ado, over to you, Mike. Thanks very much indeed, Andrew, and good morning, everybody. Uh, okay, hopefully you can uh, all see my uh, my screen okay now. Um, I'll uh, let one of my colleagues shout out if you can't, but I think you should be able to. Um, so what I first wanted to really cover off was um, just some of the challenges in, in delivering live video streaming events and in on-ramping live video to the cloud. Um, so... Just bear with me one moment. So really um, the first one here that I'm talking to is um, often that the ground encoding devices that you need uh, can have a relatively high capital expenditure cost. You can be looking at you know, several thousand dollars for a device to actually deliver the video from the ground site. And this can be not terribly economic. For example, if you've got a large number of venues that you need to stream from simultaneously, so, for example, if you're an education institution and you needed to stream from multiple lecture theatres or something like that, it could be really problematic to, uh, to do that if you've got a device that's a high capex cost. So that's one of the issues. Uh, another issue can be that um, these ground encoder devices are often quite complex and difficult to set up. So they may be a challenge for the average AV technician who's on site to actually configure the device properly and get it streaming. So, so that's another issue that we need to resolve. Um, the ground on ramp encoder devices um, uh, typically need to be configured by a person on site, uh, whereas what we really want to be able to do is remotely manage devices so that we can actually reach into and configure the devices remotely. And so we'll talk about how we can do that. Uh, another real challenge for video upload is obviously bandwidth. Um, available bandwidth can often be uh, variable or constrained. And how do we ensure that we get a reliable delivery over that uh, constrained bandwidth network? Um, uploading video over internet is also prone to packet loss. And so uh, this can be a challenge. How do we deal with that packet loss over the network and ensure that uh, we get uh, secure video delivery even in spite of internet packet loss? Uh, often you may not even have a wired connection available at all. So we'll talk to how we can deliver over uh, bonded cellular connections, as Andrew mentioned, for example. Um, AC power not, might not even be available. So you might not even have AC mains power. So um, you know, we'll talk about how we can solve that problem. Uh, often there's an inability to monitor the stream health or preview the video um, prior to the start of an event. What you really want to be able to do to give you confidence is to actually uh, monitor the live video prior to the start of an event, ensure that your video is reaching the cloud securely uh, ahead of going live. And so we'll talk about how you can do that. Also, um, you may want to incorporate pre-prepared content into your live event. So you may want to have, for example, a video that plays in the lead up to the live event, or during perhaps a break, um, you know, it might be a coffee break or half time in a sports match, for example, and you want to switch to streaming out some pre-canned content. Um, or at the end of your live event, you want to run a video that thanks the attendees for attending the live stream. Um, that can be quite complex using conventional um, on-prem solutions with uh, you know, video play out and video switching and so on. So we'll talk about how we can move that uh, requirement to delivering pre-prepared content as part of your live event into the cloud as well. Encoding devices goes without saying for on-prem use need to be compact and quiet in operation. 
it's no good having something with a you know screamingly loud fan noise or something um, on your live event. You want a device that can sit you know discreetly at the back of the room and deliver that video from that location. Uh, and you may want to add graphics. So um, to to create a really compelling live event where you're overlaying speaker names or you're overlaying sports results, for example, it can be really desirable to deliver graphics and dynamically live updating graphics as part of your live event. That can again be complex to achieve and we'll talk about how we can simplify that. Uh, and as I said, you may need to manage multiple sites and multiple devices. You may be streaming from a number of venues um, within a building or a number of sports venues, for example, and how can we really manage multiple devices uh, from a single web user interface? And lastly, uh, for resiliency, we want to be able to offer solutions with redundancy and failover switching. So we may want to have main and redundant encoding devices on the ground. We may want to have main and redundant network paths, for example, uh, and that can also be challenging. So we'll talk about how we can solve for that. So really, how can we address all of these issues? Um, well, what we're presenting here today as a solution uh, for this is the combination of the AWS Elemental Link HD and Link UHD devices, which is the devices I'm picturing here, um, together with our cloud media services and specifically our media live service uh, for powering live events. Uh, so we have two products here, two models. The original model, Elemental Link HD, which will deliver video at up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. Uh, and then the Link UHD, which we recently launched, which will actually deliver video in full UHD resolution. So up to 3840 by 2160 resolution at up to 60 frames per second. Uh, you'll see here that both of these devices feature both um, broadcast coaxial serial digital video inputs. So um, 3G SDI or HD SDI in the case of the Elemental Link HD device, and also uh, 12G SDI for UHD uh, in the case of the Link UHD device. Um, both of the devices also feature uh, HDMI inputs. So you can also feed them from uh, prosumer type cameras and so on as well. Um, and both of them obviously feature a network connection so that you can plug them in and they will connect to the internet and stream video out. So really simple connections. And then you'll see um, separate 12 volt DC power um, so that the devices can either be powered from mains power or from battery power. So really super compact devices, um, fanless, uh, simple to connect up, really just power, internet and video. And, and then these devices will on-ramp video to the cloud. Um, this is a quick comparison of the devices. You can see the small sizes here, and Andrew will actually show you them in his hand later. Um, so just like a little four inch or five inch by 1.5 inch by five inch box, um, around about 1500 Aussie dollars for the Link HD, around about $7,000 for the Link UHD. Uh, 12 volt DC power, um, less than 10 watts of power consumption on the Link HD, less than 24 watts of power consumption on the Link UHD. Uh, they can be rack mounted. You can rack mount up to three encoders for three channels of live video in one rack unit. Um, and the Link UHD is also, because it has full 10-bit color depth, it's also actually capable of delivering high dynamic range video as well. So this will be a typical uh, workflow setup in terms of how Link works. So you can see here the Elemental Link device itself is, is plugged into an internet connection. And what it does is it uses Internet of Things type technology to essentially phone home to AWS. So it contacts the AWS cloud and specifically it contacts the AWS Elemental Media Live service in the AWS cloud. Um, and essentially what it does is it pushes a single high quality encode using HEVC encoding. So it's a high efficiency video codec to ensure that we can get the best quality video in the lowest possible bandwidth. It pushes that single HEVC encode into the Media Live service in AWS. Um, furthermore, what it does is it uses um, an ARQ protocol. So it uses uh, basically ARQ is automated packet re-request. So it uses an automatic packet re-request protocol so that if any packets are dropped uh, so that Elemental Media Live doesn't receive them, um, the Media Live service can re-request those packets from Elemental Link and have them resent, and, and so that ensures that we don't get dropouts, even the event of packet loss. Uh, Media Live then acts as an encoding service in the cloud, which can produce multiple output encodes to go to different destinations. So we might produce a set of different video renditions and bit rates to, for example, 
go to our media package or media store, uh, CDN origin services, and then to deliver that content out via our CloudFront CDN to a website and to viewer devices as adaptive bitrate live streaming in the HLS or MPEG dash formats. We might also make uh, outputs like RTMP outputs to go to uh, social media sites like Facebook Live or YouTube Live or Twitch, for example, uh, so we could output those same streams. Uh, furthermore, we might also actually write a recording of our event captured to a, a file. So we might write that into Amazon S3 storage. So now we have a full recording of the content from the ground stored in the cloud as well. Um, and lastly, we can also play out file content from Amazon S3 storage. So Media Live is now able to switch between our live feed from the ground and pre-prepared files that we store in Amazon S3. So we've now solved for a number of those issues. We've solved for um, you know, basically resilient connection and reliable um, uh, high quality video over a bit bandwidth constrained network. We've solved for um, replaying from file and a mixture of file and live content so that we can actually build a linear channel, which is a mixture of file and live content. We've solved for recording our video. And we've also solved for delivering it to multiple different locations, including social media sites and websites. Um, Lastly, uh, the media live service in the cloud also has the capability to connect to uh, an HTML5 graphics web page, which can contain rich dynamic graphics. This is just a, um, a still example of a graphic, of a sports graphic that could be overlaid onto the video. But essentially, media live can pull in these graphics and overlay them onto our live video source in real time. And these can be dynamic graphics that you know fade in, fade out, move on and move off screen and so on. Uh, and we'll show you some real graphics as part of the demo. So we've also now solved for that issue of, um, of how we can deliver graphics as well. Um, so really, um, in terms of the process, it's, it's really quite easy. It's fast and easy to set up. So the Elemental Link device is shipped actually fully configured to a specific AWS account. And it automatically phones home to the media live service in that account as soon as it's connected. Um, once the link device is connected, and you may have multiple devices in multiple different venues, um, you can manage them remotely. They will all appear in the AWS console with uh, thumbnail images, so you can preview the video arriving from the ground site. Um, and then you can start and stop streaming at will on those different devices. Um, as I say, the devices weigh less than a pound, 450 grams, which means they're super easy to ship to anywhere. Um, there's nothing to configure on, on the device itself apart from configuring an IP address if it's not uh, going to obtain one automatically. Um, so there's really nothing for an AV operator on site to set up. All of the configuration is done through the cloud interface. And then obviously a silent device with um, very low power consumption, minimal heat uh, dissipation. So you can really mount these devices anywhere within a venue, for example. Um, really cost efficient. So we uh, essentially, uh, the link device itself, as I say, $1,500 for the Link HD device. Uh, and then we have a small hourly charge for running the cloud services, uh, which typically works out to three or $4 per hour maximum. So uh, really cost effective to actually run the, the live streaming channel. And we get this very high quality video by using HEVC encoding. And we'll re-encode to other popular codecs like H.264 for delivery to viewers. Uh, so common use cases for Link, uh, we see many use, different use cases. So obviously in education, you can put these into lecture theatres, into classrooms. Um, sports clubs can put them into uh, sports venues. Uh, we've seen houses of worship adopt uh, Link to, uh, to live stream their services, for example, and they can use the graphics overlays for things like song words or prayer words or, or presenter names. Um, enterprises like banks and so on and financial companies delivering town hall type events or regular staff training events, um, live music venues for concerts, uh, live performing arts venues for, for various kinds of shows. Um, and then systems integrators, you know, it's an ideal device to, to, to install, um, you know, really compact and unobtrusive to install to get video into the cloud from anywhere for live streaming and capture. Uh, and then we've seen broadcasters use the devices where they need, again, to, uh, to, to get a device that's robust and can go anywhere to, to deliver video into the cloud. 
Um, so I'll hand over to Ivan now, and Ivan's going to give us a demo of what this all looks like in practice uh, in terms of actually the link devices phoning home and then appearing in the Agverse console, and how we can use a, a solution that we've recently introduced called the Media Live Workflow Wizard, which makes it really easy to, to fire up a live streaming channel. So uh, Ivan, I'll hand over to you. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. I'll just share my screen. Okie dokie, so can you just let me know when you can see my screen, everyone? Yep, we've got you. Perfect. Okay, so um, what you're seeing here is um, the uh, Media Live console um, where the link that is uh, currently at uh, Digistore is hooked up to their camera feed and you can see Andrew there is waving back at us. So this is live from the console and what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to switch over to the actual um, AWS Elemental uh, Media Live page. Um, and now I'm, I'm switching to this one because we're actually going to run th the live demo from uh, the US today. And that's where my source is set up. And the idea behind this is to be able to um, set the demo up and get a live stream running and then leave the live stream running for the, the rest of the day. So all the attendees that are on, on this uh, webinar can then, you know, ju jump in and out and look at various points of the day just to, to refer back to it. So um, in the uh, Elemental Media Live console, again, I'll just pop in here and I can go to the devices menu and we'll see that we've got a few different link devices. Uh, and the one that I've reserved for today's usage is here. It's called SA Link 2. And I've just got some sports content going through there. Um, so this is just like a, an example of like a sports event running in a, a venue somewhere that you've taken the link to. And it's phoning home uh, to the AWS console and sending those live video streams back. This is a low proxy, um, uh, low res proxy image, just low bandwidth, just a, a confidence check to, to, to show that it's there. So um, as Mike uh, explained earlier, we've got um, something called the Workflow Wizard, which really uh, aims to simplify the whole end-to-end -end of building a live OTT streaming platform. Uh, and I'm just going to take you through a quick demo of setting that up and show you, some, show you how easy it is. So um, basically, I'll click on the Workflow Wizard. And let me just move my screen a bit. There we go. Uh, and I'm just going to hit create workflow button. And all this does is ask me for a few simple pieces of information. So I'll call this uh, workflow Digistore for today's webinar. Um, the standard, um, the, the Media Live um, class, I'm going to actually use single pipeline. Now, depending on your event, you might want to use a standard pipeline, which means you need two inputs and you've got full redundancy. But for this webinar, I'm just going to use a single uh, input. So no redundancy, but still super uh, resilient. And then all I have to do is select a, a role that allows um, my role in AWS that allows me to create these live um, video services in my account. So I'm clicking the Media Live Access role. So you can see there's only a few things that I've had to do is give the workflow a name, choose what um, class I want to use, and then choose a, a role that has permissions to build these out. Once I have that, I just click Next. And right here, at the next page, we're given the opportunity to add an input type. So this is what, where is the video coming from for our live stream? Now, we do have an elemental link set up that I'm going to use, but I'm actually going to start uh, the configuration using an MP4 file. So what this will allow me to do is to take a MP4 slate that's housed in S3, and I use that to start the channel, so it will just loop over and over. So you could have a slate, a video slate that says, welcome to the event. It will be starting shortly. And once the live event is ready to go, then you can do the input switch to take the live feed. So I'm just going to take you through that process. So I'm going to choose an MP4 file for my source. Um, I can create a new one or I can use an existing one. I have one set up for this um, demo here. And you can see right at the top here, MP4 file, looping file, Digistore. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, um, one of the interesting points here is that the um, Elemental Link actually sends the video out in HEVC at around about nine megabits a second. So you're getting super high quality video um, from the, the link device. So I'm just going to select HEVC to let Media Live know that we will be using HEVC when we switch to the link. Um, 
out so it can provision itself properly. I'm going to have a HD resolution. I have options, but I'm doing HD today. And my max input bit rate is going to be 10 megabits per second. So again, I've just chosen an input type uh, and basically the format of that input. And the next panel, I'm going to choose my outputs. So where do you want to send the video? So this is really interesting because um, I can um, just choose social media sites like Facebook, click on that button, and YouTube, uh, as well as um, media package if I'm going to send a bunch of different uh, lives to a, 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 the live stream to a bunch of different services. So um, if I scroll down and we have a look here at the uh, Facebook configuration, all you actually need to do is put your Facebook URL in, in your stream name, and the service automatically configures the best video configuration for Facebook. So 720p 30 at four megabits per second. And if you look down at the YouTube version, uh, again, all you have to do is put your URL in and your stream name, but this time we've configured that automatically for 1080p 30 at 4.5 megabits per second. So this is like super easy to get your streams onto your social media websites. Um, I'm actually going to take these off because I don't have any social media websites. I don't have any friends, um, but I'll leave it with the, the media package destination. And here, once again, we can um, choose different renditions um, and we do have PAL and NTSC formats. Because my stream is coming from the US, I'm just going to stick with the uh, NTSC format and I'll choose an, an additional uh, top rendition of 1080p30. Um, so as you can see here, I've just chosen my output group. The quality, I'm going to leave as standard. Enhanced quality does give you uh, a little bit um, of a boost in, in video quality, but there is a, a slightly uh, a, a small addition to the cost of encoding when that happens. So today we'll just use standard quality. Um, and I've chosen my renditions for my uh, media package channel, which will do the just-in-time packaging for us. And then I'll click Next. And then we're just going to have a... Um, a list of the options that we've chosen. And once we're happy with that, we can hit create um, workflow resources. Okay, so um, now what's happening is the Media Live workflow wizard is actually going behind the scenes and provisioning all the, the different services, the end-to-end -end workflow that we're going to use. So we've got our source, which is the MP4 file at the moment. Um, and then we're going to create our media live channel with those renditions that I highlighted, including the 10, um, 1080p30. And we're going to build a media package channel that will do our origination and just-in-time packaging. Uh, and the really cool thing about that is it actually builds out a HLS endpoint, a CMAF endpoint, and a DASH endpoint. So, you know, we're covering delivery to all the different devices here. Um, we are also build in a CloudFront distribution, so that's our CDN, and that will allow us to deliver these streams anywhere in the world. So I'm actually deploying this, so you can see in the top screen here in Oregon, Portland, Oregon, on the west coast of the US. And uh, when we get the streams up and running, we're going to use CloudFront to deliver them over to us here in the APAC region. Okay, so while that's um, um, building uh, the resources, you can see here that some of these um, resources have been completed. So I'm going to just jump into the Media Live channel here, click on this link, and it will open in a, a new tab for me. Let's give that a refresh. That doesn't want to refresh for me. Okay. We'll do it the hard way. We'll go to channels. Uh, and then you can see the Digistore channel here. So let me jump into that. Now, um, a couple of things I want to do before I start the channel. I just want to make some amendments to that. So I'm going to go into the channel actions and edit the channel. Uh, and once I'm in here, you can see that I've got this looping file that I configure the channel with. So this is my MP4. If I click on this, you can see that automatically it's configured to loop. So that will just loop round and round until the live stream's ready. But what I really want to do now is add another input to the channel. So I just click the ads for the add input. And then I find my um, link device, which I've named here as Ivan G. I click on that and I click confirm. And then that's added to the configuration. So that's 
really handy. That's already done for us. And the other thing I want to do is I want to go into the general settings and I want to uh, enable this channel for motion graphics. So the only thing I need to do here is click on the, uh, the button and ensure I've got enable. And that's it. They're the only two changes I need to make um, across the board here. So let me just click update channel. So that will take a second to update. Now, as a further, uh, you know, confidence monitor, I can click on the inputs here and I can find my I and G link and I can just check that, yes, it has got this little thumbnail, the video, and every few seconds it should update. There you go. So I'm pretty happy that I've got a live feed coming in. So I'm just about to start my channel, but I'm also confirming that the live feed is there. So if I jump back onto the channel, um, from the Digistore channel here, I can actually click start. Or if I was still working from the workflow wizard, which I'll do, I'll jump in here. Um, you could actually click start from here. Now it's not showing up here because our cloud front distribution is still building. That normally takes about five minutes. So I'll jump back out to the channel and I'll start it from the channel itself. We can start that before the, the CDN is built. So let's start that stream running. Okay. So the actual provisioning of the underlying um, instances that drives this will take roughly about a minute and a half to a minute to get up and running. Um, so while that's doing that, what I'd like to do is um, show you a few things. Just move this out my way. There we go. So um, we are going to um, use uh, the O player to play back our streams, and I'll take a, a um, I'll take a, a copy of that URL and I'll post it into the chat. So anyone um, watching this on a computer can um, play along. So just open the chat window. And then you should have uh, a link that you can open this O player up in the background. And while I'm also waiting for the other parts of the, the system to load, I'm just going to uh, open up my um, graphics. So as Mike said earlier, we can use HTML5 graphics to, um, you know, to, to add um, live graphics to the actual live stream itself. And um, what I'm showing you here is just the, the actual um, URL, um, the web page where these graphics are being hosted. So we're um, using a system by Liger Systems who kindly set up this demo for us. And basically what it's showing you is that these HTML5 graphics um, are built to, you know, the, the source resolution that you're using. So uh, 1080 by um, 1920 by 1080p. Um, and all the information on here can be dynamically updated. Um, and then Media Live just takes this URL and uses it when it's um, driving the, the live video channel. And we overlay these graphics in real time. So um, if it's a sporting event, you can update a scoreboard, players' names, um, or anything like that. If you're doing a town hall for a, a, you know, a big company, maybe there's uh, some awards that are going to be handed out to uh, the employees and their names can be presented up here. And again, like a house of work, if you're having, you know, um, where you're going through hymns, you can have the lyrics come up here. So it's really powerful and, and easy to use and, you know, to add these professional uh, graphics to your, to your live streams. So if I jump back to Media Live, we can see now the channel is running. And if I jump back to my workflow wizard and go into the actual workflow, then I can actually see down here all the different components that we've built, uh, that's been built. And I'm going to jump over here to the media package channel. So I'm going to click on the link and that's going to take me to the media package just in time origin. And we can see here that um, we've got these different endpoints. Okay, so um, these different endpoints, we've got CMAF, DASH, and HLS, which, like I said earlier, will allow um, anyone to, well, any device to play these streams. And we've got the media package endpoint, but I've also got the CloudFront endpoint, and this is uh, the URL that we can use to pop into that player that I shared uh, a few minutes ago. So I will just do that quickly as well. Um, I'll send that out so everyone can see, and then on my screen here on the O player, I will um, just take this and drop it into their 
you are all there and then i'll load the stream and then what we'll see is um, we should get that stream playing back and we have so i'm just going to take the audio off that um and that's just basically allowing us to, to play back the stream now another really cool thing and i'll leave this up here for a few seconds is that this cloud front um i can generate this um as you can see here, a QR code. So if you've got a, an Apple device or any device that can play HLS streams, this is the HLS um, QR code. Uh, if you just get your camera out and click on that, you should actually see that playing back. Uh, so I'll leave that there for a, a second or two before we get into the next part of the demo. Okay, hopefully you all have a chance to uh, click on that. Right, so um, I'll get rid of the uh, this tab up here for LIGO graphics and I'll leave the O player running because um, we'll do some more demonstrations with that as we go. Um, and then um, that's our other link. We're still looking at Andrew there. So we'll jump back across to Media Live. Now, once we're up and running, uh, there's a, a couple of really simple things that we can do here. So let me get into this channel. And in the channel here, I can see the pipelines running. We've got no active errors. It would go red if there was any alerts or problems. Uh, and then we've got something here called a schedule. So really cool thing about the schedule, I won't go into too much, but you can schedule actions. And you can do this either by the UI, which is what I'm going to show you now because this is a more visual thing, or you can do this with the SDK or the API. So you can you can make this programmatic if you if you wanted to. So I'm going to create the first schedule I'm going to create is I'm going to create um, an input switch. I'm just going to call this switch 01. Um, and I can have a fixed start time. So if I knew an exact time I wanted to make the input switch, I could uh, program that in here. I can do a follow. So after a certain other action and follow with this action, or I can do an immediate, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, and then I'm going to choose uh, an input switch. That's the action I'm going to do. And then it asks me which input do I want to switch to. So I've got these two inputs on this channel. So I'm going to switch to the link. So I'm going to hit create. OK, so um, that input has now been um, scheduled. If I click on the, the settings and I look in the um, advanced JSON, this is just a quick uh, look at the, the JSON that that's used to, to make this switch. So you could send this through an API call and it would do the same thing. So it's just handy to note. Um, and then if I jump across to the O player, we will see now that this will change in a few seconds. Obviously HLS, we have, uh, you know, a number of segments before um, we, we can build a manifest. So it's normally like a, you know, 12 to 14 second switch right now. So you can see on my screen here, I've switched and we've got the, the live ice hockey game. So this game is played out from one of our video servers in the US and this, um, the, the, the icon in the bottom right hand corner, the Riverside payments, this is actually on the source content. So this is nothing to do with our, our HTML5 graphics. Um, so uh, and that will change throughout the clip so if you can just ignore that um, and just look at the actual video content itself you can see that you know we're playing this back from the us and it's you know playing back really smoothly the picture looks great uh, and then the, the the last thing of the demo i want to show you is the the motion graphics so i'm going to jump back into media live um where are we here we go in the scheduler and this time um i want to create a new uh, event and i want to call this uh the Graphics, I'm going to switch the, the graphics on. We're going to do that immediately. Um, and then the type. So we've got motion graphics activate and the duration. So the duration is in uh, milliseconds. Um, if I put a zero in here, they're permanently turned on. Uh, otherwise, if I put 30,000 in there, it'd be uh, 30 seconds. So um, that's uh, something to note. The URL, that's just the URL that I had for the graphics earlier. So this is my LIGA graphics URL. So I just drop that in there. And if this was um, behind, um, you know, a wall with credentials, you could actually put your credentials in here. So you can make this all secure. Uh, and the only thing I have to do now is hit create. So that will send the message to the live encoder to insert the graphics. So let's get back to the window here. Now, again, this is uh, probably going to see the buffer time here is around jumping between 12 and 15 seconds. So in about um, 10 seconds from now, we'll see these, these graphics appear. And as you'll see, when the graphics come up, they're uh, 
you know they're dynamic they uh they have um different placements they have um different levels of uh, opacity so some things are, are, are kind of clear and other things are solid um, and one of the great things about this is not only can you so here we go not only can we add these sports statistics but um, one of the powerful things is at the bottom sometimes you'll see like a lower third banner so this is a, a, another way for people if this is a commercial stream to be able to sell sponsorship or advertising and use the html5 graphics to you know promote other things in there um, and um, basically, uh, if you look at what we've built here from end to end, we've got um, a live stream from the link and that's taken a SDI source in that's pushed through to um, uh, uh, Media Live in the cloud. Media Live's got two inputs that we can switch between. So we've got a starting slate, switch to the live feed when it's ready. And then we can use our packager to deliver this content to any player and CloudFront to deliver that anywhere in the world. So, um, and, you know, we built this in under 15 minutes. So that's pretty compelling. Okay. Um, thank you very much for your time. I'll hand back to. Uh, the, the rest of the team uh, and appreciate you uh, joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Ivan. Thanks very much. Um, so I'll just um, pick up on a couple of the um, uh, the questions um, that were asked there. Um, so I think there was a question about can we stream out to Vimeo? Um, so yes, absolutely. So, so this diagram shows, you know, various destinations that we might stream to. The, the Media Live service can output uh, RTMP or RTMPS streams, so um, and HLS streams. So we could push um, either RTMP or RTMPS or HLS to destinations, uh, including Vimeo. Um, there was another question about how we could pick up and stream um, Zoom calls. So that is certainly possible as well. Um, uh, I, I guess the key thing here is that Media Live can not only take uh, link as a file as a live source and files as a as a file source, but it can also take in other inputs in other streaming formats. So again, Media Live could have a second input here, which can take in RTMP or RTMPS streams, for example. So it would be possible, for example, to switch between uh, a live ground source from Link. Uh, and an RTMP or RTMPS stream from a Zoom call, say. Uh, so yes, it would be possible to take the output of Zoom uh, into Media Live as well and to, to switch to that as a source. So you might be just streaming a Zoom call to a larger audience via our CloudFront CDN network, or you might be streaming a, a Zoom call plus some live video from Link, or a Zoom call plus some file content. And Media Live here can really switch between those different inputs. So um, similarly, if you do have third party products like vMix, which I think was another question, uh, that then you could have something like vMix um, either in the cloud or on the ground uh, and be delivering a stream in um, with, uh, with those products. Uh, so um, obviously in this case, what we're showing here was assuming that we've got uh, say maybe a, an eight or nine megabits per second wired internet connection so that Elemental Link can talk to Media Live that way, or so that a third party product like vMix can send something uh, to, to Media Live that way. Um, obviously, the key question is what happens then if you don't have a wired internet connection? Uh, so, what we can do here then is we can add uh, another product here, which Digistore offers, which is a product called PepLink. So, it's the PepLink Max Transit Duo. What the Max Transit Duo is, is it's a bonded cellular modem device, which now allows us to take um, our internet connection over bonded cellular or Wi-Fi or a mixture of the two, uh, or indeed uh, basically to fail over between wired and Wi-Fi and bonded cellular networks. So really PepLink now provides the multi-path uh, connections uh, for the internet connection. So it can deliver data over multiple bonded cellular modems, or it can deliver over Wi-Fi or over um, wired connections. And then what happens is that data is delivered over those multiple connections. So you might just be delivering here via say two different uh, bonded cellular SIMs. So you'd have two streams coming in here with the data spread across them. And then Peplink have at the receiving end um, either a service, which they call Speed Fusion Cloud, which is a managed service that reassembles the data that's delivered over the various mobile SIMs. 
um, or you can run their Fusion Hub solo software, which is run on an EC2 instance in Amazon and can reassemble that data. So essentially what Peplink Max Transit Duo is doing is it's taking that stream, it's splitting it up over multiple paths, over multiple bonded cellular connections, uh, and it's delivering it into an EC2 instance in the cloud or the, the Peplink service in the cloud. The data is then reassembled into a single stream and delivered into Media Live. So we can essentially just add this intermediate piece if we do need to deliver over a wireless network. And what this might look like in practice is that the, the Peplink PepWave unit is a ultra compact unit, similar size to the link device itself. Both devices have DC power. Uh, total power consumption for both devices is less than 25 watts. So you can buy like a 12 volt lithium ion deep cycle battery from JCAR or, or your favorite electronics store for about 70 bucks. Uh, weighs about 1.4 kilograms, and that could power these units for about six hours. That's a 12, uh, um, a, a 12 amp hour battery. Um, so easy to set up, you know, a, a small um, wireless uh, setup with uh, DC power that you can then really stream from anywhere using. Uh, so the PEPLink, the way it works is that we specify here the different connections that we want to send our data over. So I've said here is my highest priority. I want to send it over the two bonded cellular SIMs and I'll send it over a 2.4 gig uh, Wi-Fi network and a 5 gig Wi-Fi network if available. So I'll split the data up and I'll send it over those available networks. And then at the receiving end, I'm using the, um, the, uh, the software, the SpeedFusion Cloud software is being used to, uh, to receive that data and reassemble it. Uh, so in terms of next steps, um, uh, essentially you can order the link product online and indeed the uh, PepLink bonded seller link online as well from uh, with the, in the case of the link product, uh, you just specify your AWS account number so it's automatically linked to your account. Um, the link device would ship and you'd receive it pre-configured, you plug in power, your network connection and video and you can be ready to go in less than a minute. And then as Ivan has shown, you can then go into the AdWords console to manage stopping and starting and monitoring your streams um, and uh, creating your streaming channels. Uh, so next steps here, you can basically go to the uh, Digistore uh, online store or reach out to Digistore and they have the link products and the pep link available through their online store, which is estore.digistore.com.au. Um, and also one of the promotions that AWS is running is that if you search for link to live, so word link number two live, uh, you can go to this promotional page where you can receive um, up to 500 US dollars in AWS Media Services credits and CloudFront CDN credits to actually uh, you know, cover the, the cost of your first hours of streaming. Um, uh, and that will cover quite a lot of hours of, of, uh, of standing up the workflow. Um, so that's a great way to get started as well. Uh, with that, I'll hand, I'll wrap up and I'll hand back to Andrew, who's going to actually show you what these devices uh, look like in the flesh. So um, over to you, Andrew. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks, Ivan. That was, uh, that was awesome. Hopefully people can see me. Thumbs up. Yeah, see you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is the, um, this is just to show you how compact the units are. This is the Link um, HD unit. So it's a, it's a very, very compact unit. Um, um, it has the, uh, as Mike showed on the diagram, it has the, the SDI and the um, HDMI inputs on the back. And equally compact is the PepLink. Um, this is the Max Transit Duo. So this is the one that Mike was mentioning. It is a, um, is a dual modem unit. So we have, in this case, uh, um, four antennas, two for each modem. Uh, it also has the, um, you just pop the SIMs in here, which you may not be able to see. It can take four SIMs. Uh, battery powered. So yeah, very, very compact units. Um, and the both, both of them together, as Mike mentioned, um, DC powered, um, great for remote locations. I've also got the, uh, the UHD unit here, which is equally compact. Um, quite a nice looking unit, once again, with um, SDI and HDMI inputs. So I'll just share my screen, a couple of uh, slides to wrap up. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks uh, Mike and Ivan. I can see, 
Uh, I can see a number of additional questions that have come in, but unfortunately we don't have time to get to all of these, so we'll follow these up after the event. Um, the QR code that Ivan showed earlier is back on the screen. So for those people that maybe didn't get a chance to grab it earlier, um, grab it now. Mike will leave that live channel up and running for, um, uh, for the rest of the day, I think. So if you want to take a look at how those graphics looks, um, the quality of the image, grab that, uh, grab that QR code. Um, so thanks all for joining the event today and a big thank you to our presenters, Mike and Ivan from AWS Elemental. As a reminder, you can see Digistore's contact details on the screen, so please don't hesitate to contact us or me personally with any questions or requests for advice or assistance. Um, as we mentioned earlier, this webinar is being recorded and we'll be emailing a link of the recording to all registrants in the coming days. We'll also get back to you in response to any of those unanswered questions. Uh, just before we finish up, I wanted to let you know that we've also put together a couple of bundles on the eStore. Uh, both of these include the, um, the Peplink dual 4G modem that we were um, highlighting today. Uh, there are other Peplink models as well with um, higher modem counts if needed. So both of these um, bundles include the 4G modem um, and an elemental link encoder. We have one with the HD link and one with the UHD link. Both bundles include four hours of technical assistance to get you initially set up. And uh, we'll send the details and the link to these in the follow-up email as well. So that's it for the webinar this morning. Um, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Keep an eye out for the follow-up email and um, bye for now.